guys welcome back to my channel and i hope you all are doing well if you are new here thank you so much so 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 much for stopping by my channel today and i do hope you stay by subscribing if you like what you see today's video is going to be a q and a video i asked you guys on instagram a while ago what you'd want to ask me about postpartum and motherhood and baby and all of that and yeah this video is coming exceptionally late my bad but better late than never anyway so yeah i have all of your questions i got quite a number of questions and yeah i'll just get right to answering them right now if you want to hear all the answers to your questions then stay tuned keep on watching <laughs> So the first question I got was, what do you love about motherhood so far? Um, I would say that what I love about motherhood so far, literally, is just waking up to my baby girl. Like, just seeing that cute face, <laughs> even when she gets on my nerves, by not sleeping on time or by just pooping all the time and having to wipe poop and all of that. But I, I would say that what I love the most about motherhood, literally, is just looking at her cute face and just being constantly reminded that this baby is all mine like she's my baby so yeah that's basically it's just the love the love the whole love around motherhood is what i love about motherhood that's it the second question is are you breastfeeding or pumping yes i am breastfeeding exclusively for now i say for now because anything can happen and things can change you never know so yeah i am still breastfeeding for now and yes i do pump as well because um i tend to bottle feed her at night most times when i'm just super tired and super exhausted i just take out the express meal from the fridge i warm it up and i give it to her in a bottle or my mom helps me do that so um yeah i'm still exclusively breastfeeding for now and yes i do pump as well the third question is you did a scan that said baby girl yeah what if the baby came out and it was a boy to be honest guys i don't know i said this before if, like if you watched my previous videos i expressed concern saying that i wasn't really sure even though the scan said a girl twice i wasn't really really sure to be honest if it was a boy what would i have done i would have still accepted the baby that way baby is baby boy or girl but even though i really 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 wanted a girl if a boy had come out I cannot reject the boy now. I will still accept my baby either way. So yeah, that's what I would have done. I will still accept baby, boy or girl. The next question is, did you have postnatal depression at any time or you were just happy most of the time? Well, technically right now I'm still postpartum. Like I'm literally two months and two months and two weeks postpartum right now. So not get three months. So yeah, I'm literally still in postpartum phase. Um, I wouldn't say I have had full-blown postnatal depression, but I have had my days. I'm not gonna lie. I've had my days when I've questioned myself. I've asked myself if I really really was ready. I've asked myself time and time again Was I really ready for this baby? There are times that I have cried. There are times that I don't know hormones baby blues what they whatever they call it you know i've had my days yeah most times i'm happy looking at my baby happy about my baby playing with her and everything but when push comes to shove like when she just does not stop crying or when she keeps me awake till 4 a.m 5 a.m which is her routine right now i begin to ask myself questions and i can slip into a bit of um sadness but yeah that comes with motherhood and that comes with postpartum so I mean, nobody is perfect, right? Next question is, did you work out during your pregnancy? If yes, what month is best to begin? Hmm, to be honest, guys, I did not work out during my pregnancy. I didn't do any form of exercise during my pregnancy. And still, I managed to still stay fit. And I still managed to, for some reason, look slimmer than I was looking before I got pregnant. But I think that was because I only ate when I was hungry. It still boils down to food portion control. I still I only ate when I was hungry and I tried not to overeat. And I was always, always, always active. Like always active, guys. Even down to my third trimester, I was still doing chores. I was still sweeping. I was still mopping. I was still washing dishes. I was still cooking. I was still doing laundry. So I was very, very, very active. I tried not to lazy around and sit in one place for too long or lie down for too long. I was always, always, always active. 
probably that's why i managed to stay fit during my pregnancy but actual workout routines i did not do no way um the next question is was it that painful i'm guessing this person is referring to childbirth <laughs> and this person is a guy and i know you <laughs> but of course if you still don't understand the kind of pain i went through during childbirth please go and watch my labor and delivery story yeah it's going to be here i'm going to leave a card here or here go and watch my labor and delivery story so that you can enlighten yourself on how painful my experience was the next question is what's the one thing about motherhood that was harder or easier than you expected it to be hmm. the one thing about motherhood that is that, that is hard it's just the whole thing. Motherhood is hard, guys. There's nothing easy about motherhood. That's the truth. In my own experience, there's nothing easy for me in this motherhood. The one thing that is harder than I ever thought it would be is literally taking care of this baby. Postpartum will test you. Read my lips. Postpartum will test you. Even if you had the smoothest pregnancy and you had maybe even the smoothest delivery, postpartum will test you. And for me right now, the hardest thing I'm facing right now is sleepless nights, not having sleep. Because these days now, Mia has just refused to sleep at night. Like she can stay, she can sleep for the better part of the day and she would stay awake until 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m. Just like last night now, it was 5 a.m. that she finally slept. So that is the hardest part for me. Forget that I have makeup on my face. I have designer bags right here. Designer bags under my eyes. I get little or no sleep these days. And that's why for the most part, I sleep in the mornings until like noon. That's how I catch up on my sleep. And that's when Madame decides to even sleep for long. So yeah, that's the hardest part of motherhood for me so far. The next question is, please describe the birthing process. Really so painful, scared. I'm believing this person is a mom-to-be, somebody who is approaching her EDD. Ah, the birthing process I described, for my birthing process and my birthing experience, I described it. Again, please go watch my label and delivery story. I'll have it linked up in the description box. Just check it out. I described in detail my birthing process my birthing experience go and watch it okay but please don't be scared different women have different experiences and at the end of the day look at the end result you're bringing a child into this world that is the biggest 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 gift you can ever ever get so just have faith and be strong and you will be fine okay next question is a very it's a very naughty question <laughs> It says, have you started booging down yet? Plus, is it the same? In brackets, sorry for being so explicit. Uh, this person is probably asking if I have resumed sexual intercourse with my husband. No, the answer is no. I'm almost three months postpartum and nothing has happened. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> when you go through a vaginal delivery, you are in no rush to begin having sex especially if you had a cut down there or you had a tear and you had to have an episiotomy trust me sex is the last thing on your mind right now i am i would say i am 95 percent healed not there yet not there 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 yet but it's getting there so for now nothing has happened we are not booking down anything and hobby is extremely extremely understanding so <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so shy answering this question. <laughs> and of course, I know that I'm not sure if it's going to be the same. I don't know until I try. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know, okay? The next question is, what are your favorite postpartum essentials? Oh my god, this person that asked this question, I'm sure like you read my mind because I really wanted to even do like a full blown video on my postpartum essentials, but um, I will just put that in here for you. The first thing, uh, the first postpartum essential for me is your peri bottle hmm. your peri bottle your perineal bottle if you want to know what the full meaning of peri is your perineal bottle and that's for those who are having vaginal breaths and obviously you have a cut or a tear most times 
even if you don't have a cut or a tear, you'll be sore down there. Your peri bottle will be your best friend when you want to go to the loo. Basically, it's a bottle, a squeeze, a squeezy tube kind of bottle that you use to squeeze water down there when you go to the loo so that it doesn't burn, so that your urine doesn't burn down there, that whole place that is sore or stitched up and everything. That peri bottle is a lifesaver. It literally saved my life. Okay. The second one is disposable pants. I don't know how many women use their regular panties after delivery, but for me, I used disposable pants and it was just a lifesaver. Why? Because I could not even be bothered about washing my underwear and all of that. So I would just use disposable pants and once I needed to change it, I would just throw it into the bin and that was it. I didn't have to worry. So that was a huge, 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 huge essential for me. Third one is a breast pump, guys. An electric breast pump. I don't have the strength for that manual one. I'd be using your hand like this. So just depending on me, I didn't, I didn't have the time. So an electric breast pump, if you can afford it, is for me, is an essential because when I'm extremely exhausted and I need somebody else to bottle feed me here, there's always express milk in the fridge. All I have to worry about is pumping out the milk and that's it. It just makes my life a little bit easier. The next question is, how do you keep your milk supply up? Um, to be honest, I don't do much. I don't take any lactation stuff. I, I do have some lactation products. I have a lactation tea and lactation um, shake. The one that comes in the powder form that you just mix it and drink but to be honest i don't really use them what i have been using since i gave birth is pap akamu has been working for me um i take pap at least i stick it like twice a day when i just gave birth but now i take it like once a day or sometimes once in two or three days so yes pap and um, warm beverages so you're talking about your warm milo or if you like bon vita whichever brand you like but for me i do warm milo also yogurt yogurt has also been working for me i take yogurt at least maybe twice a week you know so yeah that's basically how i keep my milk supply up i don't know if those that is what is making the milk to flow but it's obviously helping the next question is did you have constipation postpartum if so how did you handle it to be honest guys i've been so blessed i didn't have constipation while i was pregnant and i thought i was going to experience it after delivery and i still did not get constipation after my delivery yes of course after delivery and after having an episiotomy i obviously had difficulty going to the toilet obviously because that place down there is sore so everywhere around that area is very sore so of course pushing out poop i'm sorry guys this is like tmi but of course pushing out poop is a bit painful because of the stitches around that area full-blown constipation like full-blown constipation i could not go to the toilet no i didn't have that the next question is do you co-sleep with your child um no i do not co-sleep with mia um, I'm trying to sleep, train her to sleep on her own. She has a bassinet where she sleeps for the most part. During the day, I can lay her on the bed. When she gets too big for her bassinet, which is very slow because that girl is getting too big, I'll definitely move her to her crib. So no, I do not co-sleep with Mia. And then the last question is, Mia's skin looks so good. What products do you use for her? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Mia's skin looks so good, yes, I know. So I don't really use like much for her. Like you guys know, baby skin always comes out perfect and usually most for the for the most part it stays perfect for like a very long time. But um what I use for Mia are as that products. I'm gonna put them on the screen. As that product, um I use the lotion, I use the baby oil, the baby powder, and the head to toe wash. That's what I use for her. But honestly, during the day, I use shea butter for her. I've said this before. I've spoken about this before in my hospital bag video. I think I also mentioned something like that in my pregnancy morning routine video a while back. This shea butter, it has coconut oil. It's refined shea butter, so it has coconut oil and carrot oil and a bit of fragrance and I absolutely love it. I was using the same product for my skin while I was pregnant and I always knew I was going to use it for Mia as well. I've been using this shea butter for her from day one of her birth guys. The Asda lotion, I only use it at night because it's very light so I use it at night but in the day I use this shea butter and if you're in Abuja you can pick this up from H Medics. Any H Medics around you sells this. Okay that wasn't the last question. The next question, well the last question is how did you handle or rather how are you handling stretch marks after baby? To be honest guys 
I'm one of those people that was blessed not to have stretch marks on my belly. Like I didn't have, I didn't get one stretch mark, one stretch mark on my belly throughout my pregnancy. So I, I, I can't, I can't relate. To be honest, I can't relate. I have a tiny bit, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of stretch marks on my boobs, just a tiny little bit. But on my belly, I had zero stretch marks. And I don't know if that is because of the shea butter I was using on my belly on a daily basis while I was pregnant. I don't know, but I didn't get any stretch marks on my belly. So yeah, guys, those are all your questions. Wow, those were a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm super exhausted answering all of these questions. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you to every single person who sent in their questions. I truly, truly appreciate it. And yeah, I hope I answered all the questions well enough to your satisfaction. I hope so. Thank you so much, so, so, so much for watching. And if you're watching this video, you, you know you can actually share that you're watching this video on your Insta story. And I will actually repost your Insta story if you tag me in it. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We're almost at 2K subscribers. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Make sure you hit the bell button down next to the subscribe button to always be notified anytime I have a new video. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.